gonna shower, grab some food, and then we're heading to clinic today. Just doing my makeup routine, which if you'd like to see a full on version of it, you can watch it here or up there or somewhere. It's usually really simple. Like I'm wearing a mask in session anyway, so no one can see anything. A shirt it's like very conservative up front then there's a hole in the back and then I'm just wearing these really loose pants because they're comfy and it's a Friday Welcome to my office. So, first things first, I will probably log on and check my clients. I decided to film today because it's a very chill day compared to usual, so I have four clients. Thank you, Jake. So, I have a 10 a.m. who's a returning client, same with my 11, and then I've got a new person at 12, and then I've got lunch break for one, I've got a free hour where I think supervision was moved and then I've got another client as well and they're an interesting case because they're an NDIS client. She has a diagnosis of schizophrenia, she has NDIS support and she has a full team around her with psychiatrists, I think she has a caseworker and a social worker and we're all kind of like a mini team. But my first three are just typical. Firstly I need to turn the aircon, it's so hot in here. Doesn't he remind you of the Teletubby with the, the like. I'm gonna go fill up my water bottle and say good morning to our clinic manager. Oh, it's flattering. Well, I've forgotten how to do this. I haven't done like a vlog in so long because of lockdown. Oh uh, yeah. And then course. now it's just. Everything would be at home. Yeah, and like I don't even know like what hand to put everything. <laughs> <laughs> this I is our wonderful <laughs> clinic manager who sits. Oh yes. So when clients walk in. They walk in and then they're like, good morning. <laughs> good morning. I am the practice manager, so I handle everything from reception, all the taking of bookings, all the intake, um, look after all of you guys. Yes, <laughs> very well. <laughs> Make sure you're all happy and I do all the accounting for the business oh, as yeah. well. So that, yeah. It's a full on job. It is a full on yeah, job, but I enjoy it's it. So busy. It's really varied yeah. and, and busy and yeah. So many little things to think about. Yeah, well, look, yeah. we need you guys to be happy in the roles yeah. and comfortable. That's yeah. our number one priority. Okay. And then you can give the best to your clients. That yeah. Way. Thank you. Oh, that was shoddy filming, but. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sonny. So I think it's time for a little bit of a clinic tour and decorations are also courtesy of our practice manager who has come in and hung up all these really nice things. But it's a bit of a tight space. Oh, it's so messy. I should really tidy this first. <laughs> Um, whatever, this is realistic. So you walk in through this door and then usually with clients, I'll ask them to take a seat and then I'll close the door after them. Clients usually sit in that seat. I usually sit in this seat. As you'll see, there's some tissues here in case we get big feelings. Um, also COVID. <laughs> um, and I'm sitting here because it's a little bit closer to the door. Not that there's any duress here usually. And also the clock is placed here. So when I'm sitting here, I'm aware of the session time. Usually when the clients aren't here, I'm here working on the computer. We also do uh, telehealth here occasionally and especially during COVID. So I'll show you the telehealth system as well. So. <laughs> During session, I might do stuff like add a whiteboard. I might do some sort of model here, or we might write down 
goals or something, but it's nice having a whiteboard and then I can download those after the session as well and email them to a client. Even though CoView is really great and it you know, kept psychologists working throughout the whole pandemic, I still so much more prefer doing sessions in person. So I'm really, really glad that we're back. I'm gonna go see if my supervisor wants to talk. All right. You can... <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, this is my supervisor, and uh, I'll tell you a bit more about supervision later. But uh, I wanted to ask a little bit about your role as the clinic. Head. So I think we technically call it um, the principal. Principal psychologist. Yes. Yeah. So that sort of means that. I'm usually, I mean, the principal's usually my senior mm -hmm. in terms of experience. Mm -hmm. So I see clients just like you do. I supervise everyone here um, in different sort of levels of sort of intensity. So for instance, with you, I would supervise you sort of weekly. Mm -hmm. um, the other psychologists here, I would supervise this. But at the same time, hopefully, you know, sort of as a practice, we have a pretty mm -hmm. supportive environment whereby we're, you know, sort of offering assistance and support yes. all the way through on an ad hoc as these yeah. cases. Can confirm that's true. Oh, if you had like one piece of advice to like people who want to get into psychology. As a career, mm. like it's, it yeah. is an amazing job mm. in terms of just the relationships you form with people, yeah. what you learn from people, mm. how it shapes you as a person. Mm. The great thing about the job is it's never the case that I ever sort of leave the office thinking I didn't do something that was yeah. valuable in some ways, you know, like so yeah. even if I didn't feel I was particularly successful on that day, mm. I know that I was trying to do something that was, mm. you know, helpful for people mm -hmm. and trying to make a difference as best I could yeah. in people's lives. It's mm. exhausting though, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, you know, challenging job and I think, you know, it's one of those mm. jobs that you've got to really work out how to look after yourself at the same time yeah. as how to keep up with all the developments in the field. It's a fascinating yeah. job. One last question, which is, something that's really unique to my supervisor, which I've never noticed in anyone else, which is your lunchtime thing that right. you do. <laughs> okay, in terms of exercise? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Come one o'clock, it's sort of a family thing. Everyone in my family does the same. I just start oh. being pooped out. And I discovered that if I engage in vigorous physical exercise in the middle of the day, that is eradicated. Uh, and, and the reason I bring it up is because I think self-care, and I've talked about this a lot, but self-care is so important and everyone has like their own yeah. way of doing it. Yeah. And your way is really interesting because I'll see you in like running clothes. Yeah, it's been embarrassing. Through the day. <laughs> yeah. I think when you first started, I was doing yoga in the room. Yeah, yeah. I think I walked in yeah. and you were doing a yoga class. Yeah, that didn't last very long. So that was my supervisor and he is such an amazing, like really experienced supervisor. And in addition to providing uh, expertise in terms of therapeutic techniques, general questions about risk and safety and admin and like how to be a psychologist. A supervisor is also there to check in on how you're tracking personally as well. So capacity level, well-being, um, encouraging self-care. This practice in particular is so on top of that that I feel really well supported. Psychologists are required to have supervision throughout their entire career. So my supervisor has a supervisor as well. You have certain training requirements that you must meet every year and there are certain supervision requirements. That's one way in which we prevent falling behind um, in terms of the research, but also um, so that there's a, a community support and so we're not completely isolated as well. 9.57, so I'm just gonna stop filming, wind down, be present because I've got three clients in a row. So. <laughs> Uh, I will check in with you when I can and maybe talk through what I'm doing as well. So I just finished my first session and I'm just writing up the notes now. So we wrapped up the session at 10.50 and then usually I take about five minutes to write down notes. It's a lot quicker in adult settings compared to child settings, usually because I just uh, describe very briefly the skill that we learned and also how the client responded to it. Did a bit of a review, so they had a job interview and we reviewed how that went. Um, and we also kind of debriefed the fact that she thought it was going to go really badly, even though the interview was a bit strange, that she coped better than expected. And because she presents with social anxiety, that's really helpful evidence that, you know, we expected it to go really badly and then it didn't go as badly as we thought. Also, we coped way better than we expected. And then I introduced the skill of thought challenging. Cool. I've got second session and this one is a formulation session. Okay. 
Second session done. That was really good. Uh, we did a formulation, which is basically a, a psychological model of what has caused the current period of distress. And we look back on background factors, stresses that are continuing now, treatment plan forward. So how we're gonna tackle all the different areas. And it sounds very confusing. It took me a long time to figure it out. And I think this is my client. Hello. Thank you. Oh, that was just the call to say that my client's here, so I will talk to you soon. Third session down. It is now uh, 1.10. I did go a little bit over time with my last session. Um, it was a new client and it wasn't necessarily the most uh, like difficult assessment. She presented with depression and anxiety. It was actually a bit more low level, but very persistent. And so they'd been feeling down for a long time and couldn't really recall a time where they felt high, but they also couldn't particularly recall any stresses. And so it actually took a little bit of time to like dig. Now I've got lunch and then I've got a one hour break, which is great. I'll, we'll have a chat. Finish at 4 p.m. today, which is unusual, but nice because I'll catch up on admin. And I also just got a call from my child clinic director who is asking me to call a GP back because someone's mental health care plan is there's something wrong with it so I'm gonna have to do a bit of a GP call as well okay lunch time I didn't get a chance to meal prep last night but I have these bowls this is like a Mexican chicken burrito bowl thing oh it's sliding um, and Honestly, like once a week, I probably eat one of these because I can't be bothered to meal prep the night before or it's like a Friday. Actually, it's usually always like a Friday. So one of the um, cons of working in private practice is that it's quite solo. In public health, I remember like sitting around a big group table and everyone has lunch together um, because you've got such a big team. Whereas right now in our practice, we've got um, the principal, like my supervisor, we've got a practice manager, there's one other registrar working today, and sometimes um, the registrars have lunch together. But yeah, that's like all you get to see the entire day aside from your clients. A bit of a tough environment if you're someone who thrives on working like when, within massive teams where you know you really get to bounce ideas off each other. Really therapeutically, because things are confidential, I just bounce ideas off my supervisor. I get that social need met outside of work. That's probably why it's so important to have that self-care routine and that downtime routine. Speaking of which, I put an Instagram story up asking people what they wanted to see. Um, oh yes, this is my Insta handle. It's at underscore the psych diaries. But I was asking people like, what particular aspects of a day in the life would you like to see? And like all the responses are like, the free time or the downtime or the chilling out. Downtime is lunch hour, I eat and I usually go for a walk as well. So I might show you if I go for a walk. Today it's a bit... It's a little bit dreary but it's fine. As long as it's not pouring I usually go for a walk because it's really good just to clear my head. I never work during lunchtime so often I'll just like sit here with the window open and people watch because I'm like in quite a busy area and everyone's like street level and I'm elevated so I'm a bit creepy people watching but it's nice in terms of like mindful eating um, sometimes I might watch like a YouTube video or two but the only rule I have is no work during lunch so even if I have like I have two sessions worth of notes to write up that I haven't done I leave it because I need the downtime for the afternoon if I ever have leftover admin work it's usually done if I have a free hour or like end of day yeah okay. it's a bit cold also kind of sprinkling so i'm gonna stay close to the clinic because i didn't bring an umbrella this area is really nice there's so many trees everywhere and bushes and stuff so it really helps clear my head just to break up the day and to go outside and i remember very early on when i first started private practice in the child clinic i would stay inside for literally from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and I'd I'd have no idea what the weather was that day. Nowadays pretty much every day I work in private practice I leave for the middle of the day just so I can get some air. And yeah, how pretty. 
below. So it's now 4 p.m. and I just wrapped up with my last client. Hello, um, editing row here. I am just popping in because I'm reviewing the footage now and realized I completely skipped over what I'm doing treatment wise. So for this particular client, they have a diagnosis of schizophrenia, um, which basically means that they've experienced psychosis. Unfortunately for people who have had psychosis, there's a lot of stigma in our society against them and often they're quite marginalized. There's maybe been like some sort of disruption in their work or study, maybe during periods of being unwell, but also there's so much stigma that often if employers know that they have schizophrenia or psychosis, they might not get jobs, even if they are well and they're, they're motivated and they really would like to engage. And so it can be really, really tough. The way that we work psychologically with psychosis is really taking a recovery oriented approach. And a lot of the stigma comes from these myths that, to be honest, I only recently learned about this view that psychosis was this lifelong disorder that would just get worse and worse. And more research is demonstrating that around a third of people actually completely recover and never have those symptoms again. And there's also a community of people who talk about living with the voices. The approach that I'm taking with this client is really looking at their goals to engage with either like work or study. They are so incredibly intelligent that and to be honest, so many of my clients are very perfectionistic and push themselves very hard. And so we talk a lot about boundaries and making sure that they don't push too hard. There is just a little bit more management in terms of working with a full team. Okay, back to the video. I um, am going just to write a letter to her psychiatrist with just my observations of my work with her and in a little bit of a way like advocating. Right, switching over to phone. Who knew taking photos of my toast this morning was going to drain the battery so quickly? I don't know if this is just me, but does anyone else love scanning? Like, oh, so satisfying. Okay. Hello, it's 5.55. Uh, I admit I got a little bit carried away with this letter. Um, <laughs> I got really into the swing of like writing and also with the initial assessment. Um, there were so many things that I'd written down that when I was reflecting on it, I was like, oh my gosh, that links to this and that links to this. And so, yeah, anyway, it was a fun process, but went a bit over time, which is super chill because my mate's still working. Um, but yeah, I'm going to head home now and then I think we're going to meet up for dinner and then that's basically it. Okay, let's go. Head home.